So patient asks on Slido, how do we love without attachment? Does it mean that we don't feel sad, grief when our loved ones pass on? Hmm. So, uh, yes, how do we do that? So first of all, uh, our usual uh, notion of love comes with attachment. Yeah, uh, we love um, those who whom we identify with um, as my some somebody, right? Uh, if this person is my somebody, that I love, or maybe that person is not my somebody yet, <laughs> but I have nice feelings about that person. And I hoped to be able to continue to have that nice feeling. Yeah. Uh, so we want to make that person mind something. Then I can continue having that nice feeling. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, there are, of course, many other aspects to when we say I love someone. Yeah. Because there's I love my parents, I love my brother and sisters, I love a friend. And then there's the romantic love. So love can be many types also. Yeah, but while there are, there are many types and they are quite different, yeah, there's a common thread that um, uh, connects all of them, which is a certain level of attachment. Yeah. So um, at the first place, uh, why do we want to love without attachment? Uh, so this was asked in uh, quite a few other classes before. And it's basically that um, if we consider how our kind of love actually brings uh, suffering to ourselves and others, then we, we may ask ourselves, how, how can we love without sadness and attachment? Yeah. So the, um, uh, there are many different schools of thoughts yeah that teach us how to love without sadness and suffering yeah but in the uh in the buddhist teaching then the focus is at the first place why does love lead to suffering and at the core of it yeah is actually attachment so uh, to give some background for the rest yeah because i think patient attended some of these sessions before or maybe from other talks. Yeah. So <clears throat> to, uh, to love without attachment. Yeah. Uh, easy to love with attachment, easy to be not attached when you don't love. Yeah. Or to not love when they are not attached. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, both are easy. But difficult to love without attachment. Oh. So then we come to the question how? how to love without attachment. So um, some initially when we start to learn Buddhism and we learn of this concept that, oh, actually it's because of our attachment. Yeah? Before we learn Buddhism, attachment, what is attachment? Attachment is something that you put into your email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there are a lot of a lot of uh, funny Zen, Zen jokes about emails because of that. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the, the Dharma way to, <clears throat> to look at attachment or to sort of uh, deal with attachment, initially when we learn about Buddhism and we learn all oh, that's attachment, then um, Sometimes even in talks, sometimes in books, we are told, oh, we must let go, right? We must just let go of our attachment. Um, and in many cases, when we talk about letting go, then sometimes it, it may even entail letting go of the love. <laughs> yeah, so to me, that is throwing the baby up with the water. Yeah. Uh, so um, in the long term, actually, that doesn't work. Yeah. Because simply trying to stop ourselves from being attached to someone um, without changing the way we see that person. That's like asking a kid to stop eating 
their favorite cookie or ice cream or to stop playing their, their favorite game, handphone game, without them looking at it differently. At such point when they see it differently, yeah, uh, they would just stop playing. And that's why most kids stop playing with toys at some age. You don't have to tell them, give up your toys. Yeah. For most. <laughs> some continue playing. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was still playing with Transformer. Uh, I was still quite, <coughs> quite, quite, um, you could say preoccupied with Transformers, even up to JC or NS. Yeah. I just find it fascinating that they managed to get a car to change its shape into a robot. I mean, that's just amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I have a natural, uh, I, quite a natural curiosity about how things work. Yeah, so, <clears throat> but that aside, uh, so as long as we don't change the way we relate to the object of our attachment, because we haven't changed the way we look at it, yeah, then our attempts to stop being attached will be short-lived. Maybe you can be, you can, uh, what you we can probably do is uh, prevent the, the the apparent attachment. That means change our behavior. Yeah, that's 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 the most we can do. Of course, if you change it long enough, then the momentum, yeah, the momentum of that attachment may also wane off. Yeah, but if the root is not um, <coughs> severe. When you come into contact, it may arise again. <clears throat> um, in, in real life, if you get separated from the object of your attachment long enough, usually it works. Do you know why? Even though the root is still there. Do you know why it works? Because we found another object of attachment. <laughs> then due to societal considerations and societal norms, the unspoken social contract. So because we found a new attachment, then we'll be in. then you accidentally bump into that person in sing song. Then you then you're like, ah yeah. <sighs> <So, laughs> <yeah. laughs> then we'll be in. You have to live with your new attachment. Yeah. So that's our our usual uh, approach. So the Buddhist approach is really not simply to, to, to stop the attachment. Uh, of course, at the initial stage, if the attachment is leading to very severe uh, uh, case of uh, <clears throat> actions that is detrimental to ourselves and others. In other words, because of our strong attachment, we are doing stupid things. <laughs> I have to put it very simply. Then we should take a drastic step to just pull the handbrake and say, okay, distant for a while. But that's uh, not a long-term solution. It's just a stopgap solution. Yeah, so after that, the Buddhist approach is to really go and examine what is so good about this person that we are attached to. Uh, sometimes people will tell us, why are you so affected? This person horrible. Yeah. Nobody is stupid. <laughs> I mean, we are foolish, but we are not stupid. <laughs> why are we? Why do? Why is it that Sifu sometimes say so stupid, but sometimes Sifu say people are not stupid? When it comes to our craving, we're not stupid. We won't crave for something that we consciously know that is completely bad. We may be aware that there's something that is annoying about this, this person or this thing, but there's something that is attractive. That's why we're attached. There's something that we see much value. Yeah. That's why we are so ah. Yeah. And I can tell you, uh, don't be mistaken that that thing really has value. Sometimes it has value, sometimes it doesn't have that much value. We are just blowing up the value. But most importantly, one of our strongest attachment is how 
that person, those value, and so on, make us feel. In the end, it's all about our ego. <laughs> yeah. It's, at least this is what I see so far, okay? Yeah, maybe there's some exception out there. There's one person out there who don't care about how they feel, but only just crazy about. If you dissect close enough, how, how whatever good qualities or whatever is always linked back to us. We are attached to how that person makes us feel. And that is one key component. Yeah, that is one key component. And until we see that how that person so-called make us feel is actually an aggregation of a lot of factors and conditions, among which um, a, a, a significant portion of it is actually nothing to do with that person. And on top of that, if we were to go and observe all the different conditions, usually we say just go and contemplate on that person, right? But if you were to go further, contemplate on that person and all the fa factors involved in giving you that feeling or even giving you that perception of how that person is, then you find that all these factors are changing, have been changing, has changed. Yeah. And many times, we are just um, holding on to that snapshot of experience. Yeah, that snapshot of an experience. Think about a person that you are upset with. Yeah, think of a person you are upset with. It is if we are talking about someone that we are attached to. Then like, we think of someone we are attached, we are upset with first. Are you upset with him at this moment or her at this moment? Let's say you are. But are you upset with the him or her who is existing now? Saturday morning, 7.56, maybe the person is sleeping. Eh? What is so upsetting about the person sleeping? <laughs> Nothing so upset, right? Maybe the person just woke up, go to the toilet, shitting. Is the way the person shitting so upsetting? No. We are just upset with that snapshot. Yeah. When I say snapshot, it seems like it's just a moment. Uh. Many times actually it's just moments of, of irritatingness. But let's let's be more conventional. Maybe that one day, yeah, the person said something, did something, or didn't say something, didn't do something, and then got you very upset. What we are upset with is that snapshot that experience. Of course, most of us don't continue to get upset over that one incident. Yeah. Uh, but occasionally we think about it, then we get upset again. <laughs> huh? Similarly, for, I, 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 I switch to upset because that's easier for us to understand. Because, you know, uh, clearer, clearer that it's actually different. Then the same principle, the same mechanism, happens for those whom we are, we like, those whom we are attached to. <clears throat> whatever good feeling, whatever good experience we have of that person is just a few snapshot. Beyond that, like the same thing. Now think of a person that you are very close to, that you feel very good about. Yeah, attached is a big word, huh? And you may feel like, no, I, 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 I'm, I feel good about this person, but I'm not attached. Never mind. Okay, let's just say, let's say we are not attached, but you feel good about the person. Then you think, now at 7.58, two minutes have passed. Yeah? 7.58, <clears throat> maybe the person is sleeping. Then drooling. And then the hair in this array. <laughs> what, is so, what is so nice about that? Nothing so nice. Right? Or maybe the person has woken up, washing up, and then shitting. <laughs> what, is so, what is so nice about that person shitting? No, Sifu, you don't know. <sighs> that person, the way she shit, uh, or the way she shit. <laughs> uh, even the shit. <sighs> that you never smell before. You smell, uh, then you get addicted. <laughs> uh, you need professional help uh, if, you, if you think that way. <laughs> 
Maybe you need to bypass spa for every day. <laughs> so if you are to do many layers of reflection, contemplation, then we will see that actually the so-called attachment or, or that good feeling and so on is less to do with the person. We don't say it's nothing to do with that person. Yes, there was this person that's, that's existing now. And in the past, someone who is that the past person's past did do something pleasant, uh, nice, and so on and so forth. Give you a good experience. Let's not deny that. Okay? Let's not dismiss that. And there is such a thing. Okay? But that has already passed. Yeah. And if we can reflect and see that all this has change according to conditions, then our strong grasping may slowly change. Yeah. But the attachment, the grasping has to change um, only after, will only change internally after we have changed the way we look at that person. Not before that. Yeah. Now, the bigger question perhaps is, then will we still love that person? Yes and no. In a way, we will not love that person anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because then we realize that all we are loving is that memory of that person. When we say memory, it doesn't mean that person has died. It's just that that particular snapshot has already died. The present one may be pleasant, may not be pleasant. So in a way, no, we will not love that person anymore because you find that there's no person that lasts long enough for you to love. <laughs> but in a way, you will still love that person. Yeah, but that love will be quite different. Yeah, you will love that person <clears throat> appreciating all the conditions that's coming together. You will appreciate that whoever you encounter uh, only exists for that moment. Yeah, you will cherish every moment, even when you're quarreling with that, with that person, because that moment don't come back again. <laughs> and perhaps we will learn to love people truly to wish for their welfare and happiness. Yeah. So that kind of love, if we are able to fulfill that kind of love, to bring it to full purity, then um, we wouldn't feel sad or grief when our loved ones pass on. We wouldn't feel that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, until we until we are able to see that, uh, to to be able to appreciate that level, yeah. Uh, when we think about not feeling sad when our loved one pass on, it feels very odd, right? It feels very odd. I've mentioned in many classes, our human love is a very twisted form of um, the way we relate to one another. The intensity of our love, the gravity of our love, the, the, the height of our love for one another is ironically defined by the amount of pain we are supposed to feel when we are separated from our loved ones. Yeah. This is, this is how twisted our love is. Think about it, right? If let's say <clears throat> you are patoing with someone, not, not patient, huh, but any one of you, you are patoing with someone, yeah? And then the person one day asks you like, like let's say, let example, let's say patient now. Then the, 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 the boy you are dating come, uh, ask you like, hey patient, are you free this, this Saturday? Can we uh, have a meet up for coffee? Then I said, yeah, sure. Yeah, only we do that every week. You know, then, uh, oh, but uh, we, we need to talk. Oh, whenever your partner tell you we need to talk, oh, xiao liao. nothing good ever come up with talks <laughs> between couples. Couples cannot talk. Couples can just be lovey dovey. Cannot talk. The moment you have a talk, it's your luck. But then, because you have 
you, you cultivated already, so you know attachment. Then, yeah, okay, let's have a talk. Then uh, order food, order co coffee, and uh, offer other, you know, maybe some lemon pie or whatever. Then after that, stir stir, king kong, king kong for five minutes. It was an awkward silence. Then the guys finally say, you know, we've been together for a year or two. You're a very nice girl. Yeah, but it's me, you know, it's not you. I don't think we are suitable. Yeah, I'm not I'm not good enough for you. Then you're like, oh, you're not good enough? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Imagine if you say, okay. Then you're like, wait, you, you mean you agree I'm not good enough for you? <laughs> Y'all should try that uh, if someone wants to dumb you. Then say, oh, it's not you, it's me. I'm not good enough for you. Then you say, okay, and? <laughs> I, I've always known you're not good enough for me. What's new? <laughs> yeah, the person will be quite surprised. <laughs> because usually you'll be like, no, no, what? No. You're, 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 you're perfect for me. <laughs> so instead of that, you say, yeah, okay, I know that. So what's new? Yeah, but I said, well, okay, so, so, so I think we should break up. Yeah, but because we have been practicing all this, right? So while you are in a relationship with the person, you practice all this. But when the person says, let's break up, then you're like, okay, when? Like now? Now, now? <laughs> the person will be like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, understandably, you know, whatever comes together must one day part. Yeah, as the Buddha has said, <laughs> your, your other half may be like, wait, aren't you going to like put up a fight or struggle or something? Like, we, we have been together for one over year, you know? Like, shouldn't you at least struggle a bit? <laughs> so, although we are not Fuqi, but surely you must fight for, fight for it. But don't you want to break up? I thought you want to break up. Yeah, I want to break up, but you, you shouldn't be wanting to break up. No, I don't want to break up, but I accept that you want to break up because I love you. But if you love me, you should not want to break up. No, that's where you, you are wrong because you didn't attend Venerable Chuan Kwan's talk. <laughs> that would be funny. Huh? Yeah, that would be funny. Yeah, but we are not used to it. We are used to people holding on to what they are attached to what they love, what they like with their life. <clears throat> yeah. We're not used to people being okay with being separated from what we love. Yeah. But what's so bad, right? What's so bad about it? Yeah. Our time with our loved ones shouldn't be defined by the moment they die, but should be determined by when they are alive, how we live with them, how we spend our time with them, rather than how much we grieve when they die. Let's not define <clears throat> our love for our loved ones based on how much we grieve when they pass on, but define our love for them with how much love we truly give them, how much care we truly give them, without being so preoccupied with how we feel. Be more concerned about their welfare and happiness. Be more concerned about how they feel. Not to be attached to our idea of them, but to truly see them for what they are, who they are, how they are, and how they are, are going to be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Li Ying asks about agape. I've heard this, this term agape before at an interfaith dialogue. It was uh, mentioned by uh, this, uh, this Christ, Christian pastor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What does agape mean actually? From what I understand back then, I think it's about... I, I don't know if this concept exists in Buddhism because it's like a, a, an unconditional love. That is modeled after the love that the Abrahamic God had for his, uh, his creation, la. So uh, it's yeah, yeah. You, you get. Uh, I don't know. If you get what I mean. Oh, uh, well, um, agape, agape. 
yeah so let, let's let's uh let's assume that the let's consider that huh? um well <laughs> again i i can't say that i'm a an authority in the abrahamic faith by abrahamic faith for the rest of you it refers to the three main three main branches of religion, uh, namely uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, they are known as Abrahamic faith because they all has its roots in Abraham. Yeah, who uh, like they literally they, they can they can trace their roots from that person uh, that exists in the. Bible, yeah, that at least that's their belief, lah. No? as far as the belief go, and so, uh, in the I, I think from what I've heard in the Abrahamic faith, they profess the that the the God love the love the all creations uh, unconditionally, yeah, uh. So we can approach this two ways. Uh. Uh, first thing is to examine whether uh, whether the, the Abrahamic God really loved unconditionally. <laughs> Another one is to then to, to take that out of the picture and look at unconditional love and consider how it's possible. Okay? And perhaps that will then bring us back to the first point to see whether the Abrahamic Abrahamic God, as described in the various texts, fits in with such a model. Okay, yeah. So let's look at number two first. Yeah, unconditional love. Um, in the Hasutra, Sutra, <laughs> I, I have uh, mentioned many times, uh, no such thing as unconditional love. Yeah. <laughs> and then all the ladies, especially the mothers, are like, no, so. <laughs> Mother love is unconditional. So I have I have uh, dissected this uh, in many ways in the in, in all the different sessions of Heart Sutra. Namely, the fact that when we say let's say a mother and a son, yeah, or mother and a daughter, basically mother and child. Uh. So I ask, so you claim that you have unconditional love for your child. Say yes. So when did it start? When, well, when the child is born. Uh. So that means being, your child being born is a condition. You couldn't have had unconditional love for your child before the child was conceived, right? No, but I have. Well, then that's just pu pushing the point, is it? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense that you can have a love for someone that you don't even know exists yet. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, right? How about, can you have unconditional love for your child before you even met your potential husband? Did you have that unconditional love for your child when you were five years old? Now, all the mothers, you all think about this, huh? When you were five years old, you haven't even grow, become mature enough to, to think of getting married. Okay, maybe some of you five, five year old, oh, I want to get married, I want to be a grandmother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, let's, let's dull it up a bit. When you are 13 years old, 12 years old, because you reach puberty, you start to think about boy, girl, whatever really. <clears throat> but maybe some of you, older generation, 13 year old, still playing with five stones. But at some point, when you start to think of the other, of the opposite gender, but haven't met your future spouse yet, would you say that you already have that motherly love? You still don't, right? So the, the very condition for your motherly love for your child um, is that your child exists. Yeah, that's one of the conditions only. The other one is that you identify with that individual as your child. Think about it. Huh? What if you give birth to the child, but 
in the I don't know, I, I've never been in a labor room. Uh, <laughs> but is it possible that in the in the chaos of the labor, eh, ah, ah, push, 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 <laughs> whatever. I mean, I, at least from the movies, I, I, I fill in the gap. So in the midst, then maybe it's a Haitian hospital. Yeah. And then they swap the baby. And you really, you didn't know better, ma. If you didn't know better, you would still feel like, oh, this is my child. And then you will just think that your mother love for that child is the way it's supposed to be. But if you swap already, how do you know that it's not? What's your life now? All the mother, oh, it's my son, really my son. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> a bit tricky, yeah. So the love that we describe is we are not trying to have that so-called unconditional love. Yeah. Uh, in the in the Buddhist teaching, we say that <laughs> we say that it's here for kong. All phenomena is empty in nature. If it's empty in nature, then you cannot quite have that kind of unconditional love. Yeah. And but I must first. I must also say that unconditional love is a very nice idea. And many times it's not about whether you need to exist or not exist, but it's that to, to think, hey, there's someone who will love you regardless of how bad you are. A very nice idea, right? Because we are sometimes bad, sometimes good, right? To, to, to know that, to, to think that, to imagine that, to believe that there's someone who will just be able to accept everything, all your flaws. Yeah. That um, regardless of whatever stupid things you have done, the person will still accept you as you are. Yeah. It's a very, very comforting, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but I, I won't go into how the Abrahamic faith itself. Um, this idea, this this belief, this notion itself, um, without bringing in other teachings, without bringing in other schools of thoughts, other religion, in and by itself, within the Abrahamic teachings, um, there there are a lot of fundamental um, contradictions to such an idea. Yeah, uh, y'all can go and search online. Uh, merciful, just omnipotent yeah yeah can a uh, god who is absolutely merciful be absolutely just and be absolutely all powerful yeah this has been um, <laughs> dissected analyzed and contemplated on reflected on by philosophers by by atheists and most interestingly many of these arguments uh, actually come about in the in theology yeah by christian theologians yeah a lot of the good questions that are asked about religion are asked by individuals from the, their religion because who else to know better the religion than those who are inside yeah so some of these questions have been asked over the centuries oh, well, i don't see a need to go through them yeah and because Many times people can misconstrue it. Uh, yeah. So why some Buddhists I meet? So 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 agape love, that's that. Uh, huh? So uh, Li Ying asked further, why some Buddhists I meet would say things like Buddhas and Bodhisattvas would still have loving kindness and care for all sentient beings, no matter what. Is this statement true? Uh, so, <laughs> so this is where the difference between Loving kindness and compassion or care. Uh, the difference in this compared to our idea of love. Yeah. Um, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and enlightened ones have compassion for sentient beings because we are suffering. So the 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 worse you are, the the more foolish or the more bad things you do the more compassion they have for you yeah 
the more bad things you do, the less happiness you have. So the more loving kindness they have for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this this doesn't violate the first principle. Oh. They are they have loving kindness and compassion for sentient beings, not because of they are attached to you, not because they they have the kind of like oh, I, I will just accept you for who you are. A lot of Buddhists nowadays try to think, try to say that that is a Buddhist idea because it's a nice, you know, I don't know why, lah, but some, some Buddhists try to introduce this as a Buddhist idea. The Buddha, I don't see ever any teachings, let me qualify, uh, from the sutra or commentaries. And when I say commentaries, must be from Indian commentary, okay? That means the early commentary. Yeah, modern commentary, people can write whatever they want. Okay, yeah. I don't see any evidence of the Buddha ever saying, oh, I accept you for who you are. If that is the case, <laughs> then why would the Buddha keep on advising people how to cultivate? If he just accept that you are unenlightened, then accept you as unenlightened, no, then just continue to be unenlightened. Nah. Okay, what? Buddha accept you, what? then don't have to practice already. Yeah. Hell beings, I accept you for who you are. You just continue suffering in hell. Oh, don't have to worry. <laughs> why why are all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas go around trying so hard to help us? Because we are suffering. Yeah. They don't so the whole notion that accepting us for who we are, that's not a Buddhist idea. That's not a Buddhist teaching. I don't say it's a bad idea. I don't say it's not a nice idea. It's a very nice idea. It's a beautiful idea. But I wonder how, how that idea will, will help people to get out of the suffering they are in. <laughs> yeah. Also, so it's a different thing. Nah? It's a different thing. Yeah. Uh, Marcel has, has cut short your your opportunity to do research yourself by sharing the link of problem of evil. So as a result, you all don't have a chance to search yourself. So, and you all will not be able to improve your search skills. Yeah. While Marcel continue to maintain the edge over all of you. <laughs> no, no, no. That was not his intention. His intention was to make it easier for you to just cut short the process. Cut short the process to, to just be enlightened. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't always work that way. <clears throat> yeah. But still appreciate his kind intent. Yeah. Sad, sad, sad. So, um, to wrap up, let's start from where we are first. Okay, let's start from where we are first. At this moment, the, the truth is, at this moment, sometimes our attachment doesn't even come with true care and concern for the other person. Sometimes our attachment is so strong, so preoccupied with how we feel, we don't even think about how that person is. We don't even think about that person's welfare and well-being. You know what I'm saying? So while ideally we are trying to move towards having love and compassion for others, that means to truly be caring about their welfare and well-being without attachment, to begin with, are we actually caring for people's welfare and well-being with attachment? Because many times our attachment doesn't have very little element of that. So don't worry so much about your attachment so quickly. Just try to build up your care and concern for that person's welfare and well-being first. They can go in tandem. Yeah? Can go in tandem and then gradually it becomes purely caring for their welfare and, and uh, well-being and then the attachments start to go down yeah and how to do that when just now i talked about reflecting on how that person truly exists right 
and to realize that we are more concerned about our feelings. Beyond that, go and observe, go and reflect, go and contemplate on how that person is suffering or not. And when we observe someone suffering, then we should feel compassion towards that person. When couples break up and couples cry, it's because of how they feel, not how that person is feeling. Think about it. If two persons together, right? Uh, again, we, we use patient as example. Let's say, her, her, do you have a boyfriend? Yeah, don't have. So her imaginary boyfriend, imagine her imaginary boyfriend want to dump her to go be with somebody else. If patient never practice, then patient will cry and why do you, why you want to break up with me? Who is that girl? What is so nice about her? She has short hair, is it? Try her nice son, go and cut. <laughs> no, things like that. But if, if, if uh, we were to be more concerned about that person's happiness, when your boyfriend want to break up with you, when your girlfriend want to break up with you, even if your husband or wife want to break up with you, then your concern will be, oh, but it, she, she, is, she, is she nice? Yeah. Then the, your, your spouse may be like, yeah, why you bother about this kind of thing? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not trying to compare with me. I'm just trying to make sure that you'll be happier. You'll be happier. Are you happier with this choice? <laughs> then your, your spouse will be like, uh, yes. Is this a trick question? Like, if I say no, then you will say, then why are you breaking up with me? If I say yes, then you will question me, why, why are you not, not why, are you, why are you happy? No, 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 it's not a trick question. I just want to know if you are really happier. If you are happier, then I wish you all the best. Yeah? I'm happy for you. Because me being in a relationship with you at the first place was to give you more happiness. And now that you have found more happiness with another person, then I should help you. Yeah, do you have enough money to go out? Because every time I go out, I have to blanch out, no? Then do you have enough money to, to go out with the girl? Not all girls can accept that, you know? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, check ourselves. Yeah. Towards those that we are attached to, don't be so quick to say, oh, I want to remove attachment. Because sometimes even that is because we are preoccupied with ourselves. Because that attachment is causing us suffering. Then, then we want to get rid of the attachment. Not because we truly care for that person. So to begin with, learn to care for others first. And of course, eventually, gradually, if you can care for everybody that you encounter, even the cockroach that you see at your kitchen, then you will not have any problem with attachment. Okay. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Hu Yuan Zui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Hu Yuan Zui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Chang Xing Pu Sa Dao. Shi Shi Chang Xing Pu Sa Dao. Amen. 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 Till we meet again, may be guided and protected by the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And as always, Bye -bye. have a loving day ahead. And be loving by going for your vaccination if you have not. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Take care, sir. stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Bye bye. Thank you, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.